Hello everyone, welcome to Comments PR. Today, I'm going to introduce how to rotate the object in Unity with Arduino. You can use joystick, rotary encoder, or even keyboard to control the objects, but today, I'm going to use potentiometer. Potentiometer is a variable register with a sliding or rotating contact, which produces a continuously variable voltage output signal. You must have seen this in speaker or audio mixer to change the volume or equalizer. The reason I'm using the potentiometer is the rotating and sliding mechanism will be used to track the hand's movement. It's not finalized how to do it yet, so today I'm going to simply use the rotary potentiometer to rotate the objects. This is the 10K on potentiometer. I gave the 5 volt as a reference to read the varying value. And this is the 3D printed part to rotate the objects. So it goes in here to Take the potentiometer. Okay, let's start with the Arduino parts. So I made this test potentiometer script. So I start with the serial begin and baud rate of nine uh, nine six hundred, and I uh, I set up the A zero pin analog A, analog zero pin to read the voltage, and I said I made the volt a very volt and save those the analog read value from pin A0. I'll explain this part later. And I'll pr I printed out bolt and comma and the test words. And I will show you the serial monitor. It is the value from a zero comma test. It's shown, uh, it's, it's shown the zero uh, comma test, it works. And then when I rotating this potentiometer, the value is changing from 0 to 1023. So the one end is 0 and the other end is 1023. And I'm going to read I'm going to use this value to rotate the object. However, for the rotation, it's only between 0 and 360 degree. Maximum is 360. So I don't need 1023. So I need to map those value to make a new new minimum and new maximum. So this function, map function, is uh, able to make you remap the value. So the old old minimum and old maximum is zero and thousand twenty three, which is volt. And I'm going to set as minimum as zero, the same, and the maximum as hundred. The, I I can put the three hundred sixty, but I set it just hundred. So for the hand movement, just is maximum from zero to hundred. Hundred is I thought it was a maximum, so I said it's 100, and I unload it, and if I see it, now it's from maximum is 100 and 0. So from one end to the other end, maximum is 0 to 100. And for the, for the unity parts, I actually explained the previous video how to receive the value and how to set up the serial port between Arduino and Unity. So I will briefly explain in here. So I set up the serial port as a data stream and then COM7, which is, uh, can here see that my tools port is, is COM7. And then I set a baud rate as 9600 and here is 9600. You can setting up the serial port as in this format. And for the for the start, I open the serial port as a consider uh, setting as a data stream, and then I receive the value as a string by using the function read line, and then save those data uh, from the string data split by the comma. So we save this value. We send the data the data comma data right so it will be saved as right now data 0 will be the 21 and data 1 is the test so it is it's, it's saved in separate uh, string so data 0 is the angle so I received this data 0 and that is the, the type of uh, string so I change it to the float and then round up to the biggest integer. So this receive angle is the integer type uh, with, the, uh, with the angle from 0 to 100. 
there are four ways to rotate the object in Unity, and I'll show you how to I'll show you how to do it one by one. So here I made the four 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 shape of the how to rotate the object. So this is one, two, three, four. Well, first you consider you need to know that the the finger when you rotate the finger is rotating, but the joint itself is not rotating, but the finger is rotate around the joint. So this is the joint. So uh, this is the T1, T2, T3. These are joint, and this is the finger. So C1, C2, C3. So these cubes are rotating around this joint like this. So it work as a like this is finger joint and you know the finger has the multiple joints so it can be attached a lot. Uh, I'll show you the so can you see that this is a joint finger joint finger joint finger so it will rotate around the joints not the joint itself is not rotating. So today I'm going to use show you how this uh, fingers rotating in multiple ways. So first one is. Um, using the Euler angle. So this is the very intuitive way to rotate the, uh, rotate the objects. So using this Euler angles, using the vector three format, you can just rotate the object, whatever you want. So whenever the input receive angle is 70, the object is rotating in 70 degrees. But this is rotating around this pivot point. So it is not rotating around so it is just rotating from the in, in the center so you cannot rotate around so we need to use another function which is called the rotate around so rotate around is this rotate around the c1 rotate around the c1 uh, around this t1 around this one so it is rotating around this t1 with the angle received by the uh, from the this is this is the function that only work as of giving the force to rotate. So speed and the direction is required to rotate around using the rotate around function. So you cannot use input uh, angles to rotate the object. Uh, it is different from the Euler angle. So Euler angle just can you can just turn around by giving the angle, and it will if you input the angle then it will just rotate around instantly by receiving this angle value and just set this angle to the object. However, to rotate around, you need to give the speed of how, how fast it's rotating and which direction. So you need these vector values to rotate this object. The actual angle of the C1, C1 is big, bigger than what I input, then it will rotate down, so backward. Uh, uh, in the other way, up. So we will just rotating close to this value so up down speed speed I'll show you how it works <laughs> so C1 right now the first one first one the oil angle work it is rotating but as you see this is not rotate around the object oops so it is not rotate around the object and it's just rotating itself from the center pivot. But looking at the second one, this one is, can you see that rotate around this object? Oops, this meaning, rotate around this object. So it is more useful to rotate around the object from by just Euler angle. And as you can see, whenever this is very messy, and you, just need to, you just need to use the if function to control it. Uh, so I there is a, another way to rotate around but using the Euler angles so I'm going to rotate this object and I made a fixed joint to connect this cube so whenever it turns the fixed joint connected this this C, C2 will rotate together and here I set the, this fixed joint as a break force and break torque as infinity, so it will not be a detached. And then here is connected to this C2, connected by the C2, which is this one. And then, yeah, so I also 
freeze the position. So I don't want this this cube to like moving around because while it is turning. So I fixed the position. And then no gravity. Also, when you when you use the fixed joint, you need the rigid body. And then I set the I, I'm not using any gravity and anything. So this is the rotate around. And then when you see this. Can you see that this joint is very not following responsibly? So we were following, but it's, can you see it's extremely slow and it's not very responsive. So joint joint is retaining fast, but this the attached with the fixed joint uh, cube is not following like extremely responsibly. So it is not a good way to rotate the object. And the last one is I'm going to make an empty object which is T3, this is the empty object, and I child the C3. So whenever it's rotating, it will just follow because it's a child and this is the parent. So whenever it rotate, I rotate this one, this is just rotating because of, because of, because this, is its parent is the C T3. So I'm just rotating the T3 and with the Euler angle, and then it will just responsibly rotating because the T3 is parenting and childing from this making this connection. So it's not joint and just following very, very responsibly because it's a parent and child. And it's like a rotate around. <laughs> so we see that there are four ways. We see that there are four ways to rotate. The first one is the oil angle. But as you saw that this is not rotating around the pivot. Are just rotating from the center so it is not a good fit to rotate the finger and the second one is rotate around and can you see this like uh, this massive code uh, lines and to if, if statement and and the third one is the joint which is not very responsive and the last one is the make up empty object and rotate the the parent to rotate the child and then we saw that uh, number two and number four is responsive and but the problem is this one this joint is not rotating so the best fit is using the make an empty object apparent and rotate the child this is the best option I chose and I'll show you the my sample hand I made so this is the left hand with the uh, uh, palm, uh, first finger, index finger, middle finger, the ring finger, and pinky. And everything here is joint with the, this purple cube. This is joint. So joint will rotate around the whatever is attached to the end of the side. So can you see all this parenting and childing here? So I'll show you the numbering here. So L2, J1 is the second finger, which is index finger, uh, joint one. So this one, L2, J1. And as you can see in L2, J1, there are a lot of parenting. So L2, J1, and this is the L2, one, the first, the first one of the index finger. L, second finger of the first finger, first, first tab. And then here is the L2, J2, is L2, 2. L2, J3, and L2, 3. So everything is parented and childhood. So L2, J1, whenever it's turned around, everything here is turned around. And then whenever L2, J2 is turned around, everything uh, below uh, below here is turned around. And then L2, J3 here, and the L2, 3 is turned around. So whenever it's returned, then it will turn everything here from here or from here and same as here 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 so middle finger uh ring finger pinky everything is connected and parented from from the the joints and these fingers before i'm going to explain how this finger rotate i'd like to show you how this sample hand designed i made empty object as a joint and parented and childed every joint and fingers and adjust the length of fingers and joints. I'll show you the scrape how to uh, move these hands. 
So I made this uh, of the transform object L to J1, L to J2, L to J3 to L5, J3, uh, which is all the joints here, because it's gonna be the whatever. This is, because this is the actually rotating, and this is the child of this. This is what it is actually rotating. So what we need to do is rotating this one, not this one. So we're rotating this uh, empty joint to rotate this finger. And then that's why I made this transform here. And then we need to set a port, open it, and receive data, and then make the integer. And then okay, for, I will share set up step by step. So let's start here is the second finger, the index finger, joint wand. Whenever I receive the value, just turn rotate around. And then the J2 here is L to J1 angle Y plus reset angle because whenever it rotate around here, whenever the finger is rotating around here, and then it will be added to this rotation. So other otherwise it's just rotating separately and it is not making the actual hand movement. So we need to read at the angle from the J1 and from here it need to be added from angle from here so we need to add add this angle from the actual value so for the for the whenever the the design is sophisticated and everything is uh, done I will read this receive angle I'm not going to use just one potentiometer to rotate this uh, uh, making this hand move but I'm making a multiple potentiometer and read the multiple values and at the multiple like the values separately then will the hands movement is extremely uh, uh, extremely in detail but however right now I just I had just have a one potentiometer this is why I did like this and next the next time I will show you how uh, show you the multiple potentiometer to uh, you track the hand movement in very uh, interactive and diverse way. But here, today we only have one potentiometer, that's why we are using this kind of format and I'll show you what how it works. So can you see this? Okay, like here, okay. So whenever the receive angle here, Read it, read it. And then here, receive angle plus whatever the angle here. And this one is whatever angle plus receive angle. So it is look like you grab something. Yes, and it's pretty, uh, it's very bad design. <laughs> only, only consists of the rectangular cube. But we see that this is a working very responsibly and working very well yeah so hand is moving very responsibly and it feels like grab something uh, I didn't put the thumb here because the thumb is moving very very dynamically and then it only working in just one rotation it work it rotating in multiple direction and it's really hard to make it right now so I start with the uh, uh, I start with just the index finger middle uh, ring and pinky and I'll I'll figure out how to track the hand or thumb movement and come back to you but today we need this just four fingers and I think it's very satisfactory at the beginning and I'm going to use a multiple potentiometer to track this all this finger separately today just we have only one potentiometer so this is very <laughs> Satisfy. Great. Today I introduce how to rotate the object using a potentiometer. The next video I will use the multiple potentiometer and 3D printed parts to track the hands movement. I also use the motors to give the haptic feedbacks. Thanks for watching and I will come back with a great idea.